Okay, everybody. I wanted to give you a little review of um, how to do a how to do a confidence interval and uh, and calculate, of course, an odds ratio. I'm sorry about this not being very uh, if it's not very clear, but I'll post these files as well as the video so you can have it and you can take a look at it. So in this case, I have uh, what looks to be an, a, a cohort study, not a case control study, and we're trying to predict. The, the odds of getting the disease among those who are exposed versus those who are not exposed. So I created this two by two table he well, here. That's actually three by three, but two by two in that these are the cells you need A, B, C, D cells you need in order to complete the task. And these are the totals. So these are marginal values. We call values at the margins, marginal values. And this is the total of 330 individuals. So I created this uh, this this data set, assuming that there's like I think an eight percent prevalence, disease pre prevalence means eight percent of the population has it. So that worked out to 26 individuals versus 304 who do not have. So if you look at these columns, the stat disease status is either yes or no, and then in the rows you have exposure to pathogen D versus expo not exposed to pathogen D, D. So those give you the marginal values again so exposure with 78 individuals were exposed versus 252 so in order to calculate the odds ratios we need the odds for each of these uh, for the for having disease D among those who are exposed and then the odds among those who are not exposed the odds are the probability of success divided by the probability of failure so we don't really need to calculate probabilities but we can just take the raw numbers here so success in this case would be having the disease, so that's 17 individuals, and failures would be not having the disease, so that's 61. So we do 17 divided by 61 equals to 0.2787. So that's the odds of having the, the disease among those who are exposed. Then we do the same for the odds of having the disease among those who are not exposed, and as you can see from the table, nine individuals got the disease among those who are not exposed and 243 did not among those who are not exposed. So that gives us a whopping total of 0 0.037037. So those are your odds in both cases. And then we need to calculate the odds ratio. So I asked the question, what is, what, what is the odds? That should be, what are the odds of having disease D for exposed versus non-exposure? So in that case, we use the formula we learned before. So it's not much of a formula. It's just dividing the odds of exposure of disease D among those exposed to the odds of disease D among those not exposed. Again, this can translate to a cross here, right? 17 times 243, right? Divided by 61 times 9. And that's what I did here. So you can set it up either way. It doesn't really matter. Our total here is 7.52, and I'm going to leave this here now. We'll do the interpretation. So this is obviously greater than 1, so exposure does indeed result in an increased odds of having the disease. So it's a risk factor. So what is the 95% confidence interval, your favorite part? So if you remember, in calculating the 95% confidence interval for an odds ratio, we're dealing in what's known as the log odd scale, so it's a natural log scale. And to eventually calculate the confidence interval, we're going to have to return it to the odds ratio scale. So you see in the, the exponent area right here, or the power area if you want to call that, we have the natural log of the odds ratio plus or minus the standard error, which is 1.96 times, excuse me, plus or minus the margin of error. Margin of error is 1.96 for a 95% confidence interval times the square root of 1 over A plus 1 over B plus 1 over C plus 1 over D. So this is this whole exponent up here is going to be in the log odd scale or the natural log scale. So we need to calculate this piece right here. So we take the, to calculate the standard error, we do 1 divided by A. So here A is 17 plus 1 divided by B. Uh, I did it actually C, right? So 1 over 9, or you can, it doesn't matter which order you do it in. 
plus 1 over 61 plus 1 over 243 and I took the square root of that bad boy and I got a 0.5812187 so that's my standard error let's go to the next picture say a picture tells a thousand words right uh, bigger no not smaller okay so again we need the natural log now of the odds ratio because that's one thing we haven't done yet so the natural log of 7.52 on our calculator thingy is 2.0 so once we get that natural log of the odds ratio we stick that right here and we add and subtract from it the margin of error which is 1.96 times 0 0.0581 and I, you know, I carry it out to quite a few numbers because I want accuracy. So this is in the log odds scale. If we stay in the log odds scale, so we haven't converted to an odds ratio yet, it's 2.017566 plus or minus 1. Point. So this first calculation here is is the is just basically showing you what the the uh, margin of error is. It's 1.3918. Nine, so we're adding and subtracting that from our point estimate. Our odds ratio is what we call a point estimate. So this piece is the odds ratio itself is a point estimate, and then the confidence interval is what's called an interval estimate. So I subtract 1.139189 from 2.07566, and I get 0.878377. Then I add 1.39189 to 2.017566 and I get 3.156755 okay so it's adding and subtracting so this gives me my my confidence interval in a log odds scale which doesn't really mean much to normal human beings the next step is to exponentiate it so this becomes the power in this this function here so it's e raised to 0.878377 so it's e raised to this value here, this lower limit, and that equals 2.407. Then I do E raised to 3.156755 and I get 23.494. Now this one I, I, I limited now to three significant digits because this is where I'm gonna, what I'm going to report. Okay, And then of course I return my, natu my log odds, my log odds themselves back to the odds ratio. But you really don't have to do this because you already had the odds ratio of 7.52, but I just wanted to do it anyway. Now, I interpret this as exposure to pathogen D resulted in a seven and a half fold increase in the odds of acquiring disease D. And then I present the odds ratio equals 7.52 and the 95% confidence interval of 2.407 and 23.494. So essentially what this is saying is that the true population value is somewhere between this lower value and the upper value. Now, I will note that since this does not cross one, that means one is not contained within this 95% confidence interval, we could actually say that this association is significant. So there is a significant relation between exposure and having disease D. Because remember, one a odd ratio of one means that the odds for having the uh, the odds of for having the disease among the exposed is equal to the odds of having the disease among those who are not exposed. So this is actually a significant difference. I thank you very much for spending this wonderful Saturday morning with me for like even a few seconds. Bye.